Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Polyhedron Collider Cast Live at Expo. I'm Yay! Steve Tudor. Yay! It's your turn. He got drowned out. I was thought he was going to do it again. Sorry, I'm Steve Tudor. I'm Andy Lewis. <laughs> I'm Sid Gill. And I'm Rory Summers. I said remembered his name this time. I did, I did, but I was going to no say... No biscuit in his we, mouth. We need to remember that we might have people talk back to us. <laughs> right, <Roy, where is laughs> that? Well, as opposed to us. <laughs> well, no, because that, that, that threw your game, threw you off your game straight away, didn't it? It did, we got applause, we, we I'm not used to that. often get a response, it's, it's a rare treat. That is true. <laughs> Quite well, exactly. we do get responses, just not always positive. <laughs> yeah, there is that. Yeah, but Steve can normally mute us and stuff like that, mm. right? so he can Fair. cut us out. Now, how have you got an eclair this time, Sid? No, I haven't got an eclair. Right. Not even got I haven't got tea. ginger nuts, I haven't got shortbread, I haven't got... What the hell am I? Chopped liver? <laughs> <laughs> right, took him a minute, took him a minute. <laughs> that is a lot more information than we all need. <laughs> I, I should actually point out that the eclair incident was hilarious because we, you obviously don't see our video, but we're doing it all on Zoom, and Sid is very delicately lifting the eclair box up, very carefully opening it so he can't hear it, and slides this eclair out. And we all didn't notice until he was just about to put it in his mouth, and then made him laugh, and it almost went everywhere. <laughs> there, was, there, was, there was almost a cream on the monitor instant. Not a good way. <laughs> all right, there's the bar. We've set the bar low. It is, it's, about, it's, it's, it's less than two minutes, isn't it? It hurts every time. Every time. I haven't sworn yet. Okay, right. I'm, yet. I'm not said any swearing yet. Yeah, there's no air so, hole, so... moving swiftly on, who has had a great expo so far? It's all right. Yeah. 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 Um, so, go on. Let's, let's just whip through some highlights, because we've seen that you've got the Geek List, which has got 35-odd games on it. Something like that. I think we've played all but eight of them so far. Yeah, we've I, done well, actually. Yeah, five really of well. them are not really even well. here or not even playable. Yeah. yeah. Um, we were just, I was just discussing with someone earlier that we, we, the Callisto, Callisto uh, Undaunted yep. Callisto is basically the other side of a piece of glass so you can't yep. even yep. touch it. It's so, um, it's so Sid can't drool on it. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> there was an incident at the preview, guys, where I did touch it. Oh, oh. you did? Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I touched yeah. it and moved things around and I think um, did you get all I off? stopped it being played. But yeah, there's a uh, it was your fault. No, I, I'm just making that up. But I'm going to own that fight. If it's me, I'm going to own that. No, it, it, it's, um, it's not finished. Right, it's, it's the long and short of it, I think. Um, it's getting released at Gen Con. Okay. So okay. we can all fly over to Gen Con and have a play, then we play there. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You, you said that this is, I think, the first time I've not broken someone's demo mini. Have you not? Expo. But you didn't, bro you, you didn't <laughs> break the water shooter. fountain. I brought the water fountain, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to break something. <laughs> um, I think our big highlight, because three of us played it and really, really, really enjoyed it, was Horror on the Orange Express. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was amazing. Um, really, really absolutely good. Amazing. Proper big... Call of Cthulhu-esque, well, Call of Cthulhu, it's Chaosium, uh, co-op game where you're trying to hunt down the cultists on a train. There's about seven ways in which you can lose, and only More one way in which you can win. Uh, we won, but when we say we won, we won by the skin of our teeth, because I think we were <laughs> one step away from kicking off six of those seven ways we could lose, mm. and we just got through it the skin of our yeah. teeth. It was one of the things like, oh, you've got an hour demo, and we got so far in, the guy went, well, it's the last one of the day, do you want to finish, boys? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and I think for at least 40 minutes of that, we were 10 minutes away from losing. Yes. <laughs> So it's, it's a proper like co-op and touching cloth the whole way. Uh, yeah, Very yeah, much so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean the, the tension of it was really well done. Because yeah. I say, I mean, he said he genuinely said, "I think you're gonna this game's gonna last ten more minutes," and it didn't. It lasted another sort of forty. Oh, I mean, yeah, we ended. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant pushing because pushing pushing we managed to just about manage the, the the evil just about, but it kept the tension all the time because every single turn we're thinking we're gonna die here, mm. we're gonna mm. die here, and that's what kept it fun. It was great, really, so really well done. I did say in the pre-expo episode that the thing you liked most about the game was gonna be something. You didn't know, so am I right? No. no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, I mean, okay. we were going to say no, whether you were or not. <laughs> but I, I think it's got everything that we expect from Cthulhu, because yeah. I mean, we've, we've all played a lot, so I mean, it had the tension, it had the, the ridiculous levels of, 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 of evil, everything was against you, there was a lot of unknown. But you're, you're right, because I knew about the mini-games in it, right? Because there's, right. there's loads of little mini-games. <laughs> yes, Rorosaurus, you are right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> they were live now, so I can't edit this. Can't edit this nonsense. You can't edit this nonsense. No, um, the little mini games. Oh, they were a bit of a surprise. You know, pulling from the back. Oh, you weren't there. I'm talking. No, I was there. The mini game. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I remember the that little mini game that we could pull at the back. 
was more exciting than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I thought it was just going to be a matching pairs thing, but it wasn't. You could really mess the whole game up. And you nearly you? did. You did. Mm -hmm. Just one more. Just, just one more. Push just your your just luck. Luck. No, stop now, Sid. Push your luck. Yeah, 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 there push is. Push your luck by pulling tokens out of bag, match two together, and then you get stuff if you match them. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so you, you get to buy like, poop, playing. like, yeah. different, like, um, passengers and stuff like that. So okay. there's, there's actual miniatures that represents all people of interest and then the sort of generic mm. passengers which are represented by dice mm. and the mood of those passengers can change you just change the dice and mm. they can go from like happy to indifferent insane. to annoyed to insane right, and okay. obviously different effects can kick off because of that oh. um, but on top of that each of the people of interest has like a bunch of tokens on them that are unknown bits of information about them so you need to kind of interact with them and poke them and, and find out these bits because different combinations of those tokens or whatever they represent like a ticket to somewhere or a piece of clothing they're wearing or whatever it is a combination of that stuff will mean they're either a cultist or not so you are piecing together this mystery yeah. yes, yes. Logic, logic, yeah, yeah. Puzzle as well, yeah. logic puzzle as well yeah, yeah it's really really, cool. really well there's, there's, a, there's a weird double edged sword with the game though that it looks really cool because it's an actual train with carriages little 3D carriages yeah, like, like, Cult um, Express. like Cult Express but the track which does all the, the keeping track of stuff is in front of that so it works really well at something like Expo, where the guy down in the game is sitting behind it, and we're all sitting in front looking at it. Oh, okay. I don't know how that's going to work when you get around a table and everyone's sitting around it because people you can't not see. Be able to see anything. Yeah, that's true. So, I'd love to sit at a table like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah obviously the but then you can't reach to the end of it. You like doing this. You need a person. They need a man. So you need to hire someone. <laughs> you hire someone. Um, so we're back to the child labour again. Yeah, we? Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Stuff. But seriously, guy, if, if if it's one game for me that I don't think people should miss. Pop to Chaosium. They're doing an, a demo on the hour every hour. It's worth a poke if you get a chance. If Definitely. you're into that kind of game. For the it's three really hours of, mm. of the, uh, the the thing we've got left. Well, it's three, three chances. It's true. They can all get in, I'm sure. <laughs> all right, okay. But it was ace. Really, really good fun. As a, as a sort of team game, it was yeah. very fun. Very much our stuff. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to go last because I'm going to talk about stuff that you can't play. Well, that's useful. That. Yeah, just just so you know. everything that everyone can see at the end. You know, we've got yeah. the first look at. So I'm going to talk about courtesans that you can't buy. Right, but you can still play it. You can still play it, but you yeah. can't buy it. I noticed there's two copies of it. And I'm going to talk okay. about uh, Lord of the Rings: Duel for Middle Earth, which nobody can play. Because you very smug about play it. Because I'm a smug bastard. <laughs> <laughs> no, people can play it. Oh yeah, no, you can't play it. You can. You can just no. wander up. Just rock up. Laura did. No, I got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they blagged it basically. <laughs> Hmm. So yeah, but so someone else can someone else can talk about other things that they do. Do you know what we should do actually? While we've been at the expo, we're doing our challenge. Steve and I, the Board Game Geek 100 challenge. We managed to cross off two. This expo, we played Seven Wonders. We played Seven Wonders because it was the first time we had enough people round in one go. Yeah, and, and then we played Croconaut. And we played Croconaut hey! thanks to our man over here. Um, and uh, it doesn't matter who won Croconaut. <laughs> what matters is is that we we played it. We crossed it off the list. <laughs> And um, we both had I, I we both had emotion. I suspect, the pe I suspect the people in the tournament definitely it matters to them who wins. Did you lose, Laurie? I did. I did lose. <laughs> you lost quite badly. Mm. Was it? Uh, Annie was a bad loser. Annie was a bad loser. <laughs> really? Was it a sound thrashing? Yeah, it was. The thing about, I wasn't expecting this about Crokinole. I thought it's just going to be it's going to be like a pub style game. It's going to air hockey type of thing. I got so into it. Yeah, it's I very got so it. into it, and it's just a little, just and then you, you, you either you get it wrong or your opponent stuffs you over. Like the rise and fall of emotions in that. Finally, do something great, like get my little what are they called pucks? They're little pucks into the little hole. Yes, in your face, Tudor. And then he goes and does the exact same thing and completely nullifies my point. That's crocodile. <laughs> uh, did uh, so, did you did you play the advanced version? Because I'm sure I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, but the pucks have got two sides to them. They're very slightly angled on one side, so they've got slightly sticky. Yeah, you can like do oh, things. Up, yeah. <laughs> right. I know, do, I know. But do you, you, do can. you think we look like the type of people that play an advanced game? <laughs> this is why I'm asking when you play <laughs> this that. This crocodile yeah. session started with them being told not to eat the pieces. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an Oreo. It's just no. not a sweet. Uh, you know what I mean, I'm not going to turn around and say sure I know the difference myself because I don't. <laughs> but I'm aware that the professionals are uh, they can they can take use of of each side. Uh, I, I was impressed of the bum cheek rule. Yeah, you can, as long as one, you, one arse cheek's on the yeah, chair. Yeah, well, you got to keep an arse cheek on the chair at all times. Mm. So if where you put your chair at the beginning of the game is important. Yeah. And, how, and, and how broad your arse is. Yeah. <laughs> it was, That's a game for us. It was an interesting rule. It's a kind of a game that encourages overeating then, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a bit bigger. No, but then you've got further to get to the... Okay. Oh, that's true. So you've got to do a lot of sit-ups, but eat a lot of donuts. It doesn't matter. <laughs> 
J-Lo. She'd be good at it. J-Lo. <laughs> J-Lo, J-Lo would J-Lo, be good yeah. at Crokinole. <laughs> there you go, guys. You can have that for free. There's your advertising campaign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. J-Lo loves Crokinole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good. But to I'm talking about arses on seats. One of the games we played yesterday where I think you made a good point. It's the type of game that you really need to stand up to play with SETI. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So SETI was a a really nice, crunchy game. Uh, There was a lot going on. Really big board. Very long board. Very long board. Um, But it's the type of thing that, you know, um, Steve always says this whenever we play Crunchy Euros, that the proof that my brains are in my (laughs) arse is that when I have to start thinking about my turn... <laughs> like that, is, that, I mean, is that to improve the cooling so you, you yeah. don't open it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, just stood up. It's like, it's like your PC, you need to keep it cool yeah, so yeah. you can, can keep <laughs> operating. So I have to stand up to look at it and I end up playing a lot of the Euros stood up. Um, but SETI was another one that I felt like I probably needed yeah. to do that. that I mean, could, the other thing to consider as well, we were on the, the chairs which are in the NEC halls, which are, which are uncomfortable <laughs> after about three and a half minutes. So I might be t- I'm taking of, this chair with me. Well, yeah. I'm carrying it around. Because it's, right, it's, it's, it's a lot more comfortable. I've been the most comfortable um, all week. Eh? But, but SETI, I was really impressed with SETI. Mm-hmm. I yeah. thought that was really, really cool, really clever. The way the board rotates, yeah, the way the yeah. board actually changes, depending on what you discover. You're going to get new civilizations, new sciencey st- sciencey stuff. Is the non-scientist on the podcast? Mm-hmm. Uh, you will explore new things, and it will change and mutate the board. Yep. Um, quite a lot going on there. I feel like we really need, we we, we, we need started poking it. We need really more time. Yeah. A lot more time. There was, there was several actions. I don't think I even touched on that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't. I never used my computer. Did you know? I didn't know. You did no, use your computer. No, I put, I put, because you've got these lovely little uh, what it, mini Midget gems. gems. Mi- mi- yeah, like, yeah. Mini those gems. things, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. You, you put them all in your computer, and I got as far as putting them in my computer and then never uh, doing anything with them. You didn't boot it up. <laughs> 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 Did, didn't stand it up, so. On a similar note, I should probably mention Shackleton Base, because that was actually of a similar kind of complexity. Mm. So Shackleton Base was, you were building a base on the moon, and... Um, Andy said when he looked at the pictures, it looks like on Mars. And it does look like on Mars, but it plays absolutely nothing like on Mars. Well, that's good. That um, is good. It's like worker placement, but where you place the worker fires off actions in like a row, which is like a hexagonal base. Oh. Um, and I didn't understand half of what I was doing in that game in the demo. Yeah. Well, it was just like... That's, that's part of the We've just been told, why didn't you go there? That'd be really good for you. And I'm like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's really good for me. I'm winning. <laughs> it was beautifully asymmetric as well. Yeah. It was. Oh, oh really? Oh, really? Oh, yeah, it yeah. Asymmetric. It's proper asymmetric. Everyone, because you got different combinations of. Um, uh, it, it's supposed to be a collaboration between private companies and governments on yeah. the moon. And so they each, when you pair up together, when you start, you get different pairings. Okay. And the pairings are totally mental. Oh. And you can also then go to other people's. Yeah like companies and yeah. private companies and stuff it's pretty mm. cool yeah. it's very what, good what was really cool was um, it's got space tourists as a mechanic yeah so you can get points for bringing space tourists but they sit in your base and clog up your action spaces because they're getting in the way if you do oh. real work <laughs> so you have to build them a casino yeah. to send them to the casino or like various other things yeah. not just casinos like you know, visiting flights and stuff but the casino is the important one and you send them to the casino and then they Leave your base, and you earn money off them. Oh, that's, that's quite good. Quite so you don't you don't build like an airlock mechanic like you would in Battlestar, for example. <laughs> it's not among us. You don't kick them out the, uh, that's a shame. the airlock. It's a solution. Because mm. that's a that's a Fabio Lopiano game. Isn't it is. It? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We do like Fabio Lopiano yeah. games. Mm. Um, okay, brilliant. Um, what else are we going to talk about? Andy, you anything you want to mention? I have just played Terminus, literally with three reprobates over there on the second row. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I think we all did, actually. Really, really great game. Um, been described by Mr. Lacerda as quite heavy, which tells you all you need to know, really. But the player interaction in it, it was fantastic. Now, I think I was lucky enough that we're all quite, you know, verbal gamers, as it were. Um, we were taking through it from Brandon. from um, <laughs> That's the politest way of describing that. <laughs> well, uh, and we had a great, a great demo from, uh, is it Brandon? From um, Brawling Brothers. Brawling Brothers. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a really great sort of five-way dynamic as well and it turns out that we're all quite antagonistic players <laughs> but yeah. the idea is that you're building sort of subway lines and um, earning points for various ways you do it so you build subway tracks so it's, it's not dissimilar to on the underground if anyone's played that from a couple oh, of years no, ago you just said horrible words it's better a oh, lot okay. better a lot better because I found the, on the underground was alright but not 
So how much of the root building is kind of integral to this? Is, Quite it, is, there, more, is there more things going on than just the root building? A lot more. Okay. The, the, the root building is more of a kind of a culmination of doing a lot of planning. So there's a rondelle at the top where you do a bunch of actions nice and guy. you need to do about, yeah, he is, Rondell's lovely bloke. Um, and uh, you, you do this thing, but you, you need about six different things. So like plans, documents, um, construction cones, money and various other bits, and that's with some track before you can even start to put stuff on the board. Um, so, you know, you get, I think it's three years for the game. We didn't even get through one, I think. We've been into the one year for the demo, which takes about an hour with the teach. And uh, you've got to get all of these things down. Then you'll put some stuff on the track. Okay. You can't start the game by putting stuff down because you just don't have the right stuff. So you've got to plan quite a long way ahead. Um, but there's a, an interactive market for each of the components. So the more people buy, the more expensive it gets. They're restricted. So if they're all bought, no one can buy any more. Um, money is almost impossible to get, so if you run out, you're screwed. Yeah. Um, so it's a really tight game, so you've really got to plan what you're doing, which is obviously what none of us did. But, uh, <laughs> but the best bit is that because obviously once you put track down, you're in everybody's way. It's, nobody else can go there unless it's like a dual A track and stuff. So um, I bought an absolutely mile of track, and everyone went, well, it's obvious what Andy's going to do. Let's build everywhere where he wants to go. Oh, <laughs> <good>. <laughs> But I still foiled them. But it was a really, really great fun game. Very crunchy, very thinky, very tight. Uh, extremely high production value. Mm -hmm. I think it's about 50 quid, he said. So it's $59, so about 50 pounds. Uh, it, yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's still on... I think you can still pre-order it. And he said you're going to basically get everything that's, that's there. It's yeah. extremely good. Really recommended. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm got, I'm, I think whoever tips you off to that game should get a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just annoyed. Right. I'm, just, right. of course I'm just really annoyed. I missed the Kickstarter <laughs> yeah. with you having, you know, Andy. Yeah. You probably like this. I probably will, Rory, and then forget. Never so, mind. So, have you played Pleasure's the Galactic Cruise on that same principle? I have not. Oh, Ooh, yes. no, I haven't played it yet. <laughs> I was about to do it this morning. Then the chap said, "No, Andy's already done it." I was like, "Brilliant, I'm off." <laughs> no, I haven't. I've been thinking about it, but it is considerably more expensive than it was on Kickstarter. Yeah, um, I, I, I hear that it's going to be more expensive still when it comes to retail. Jesus, because it's ninety. Because of because quid, of business well. reasons, which we because probably of, yeah. shouldn't. Because of reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hot cause, tip. You know, because of businesses wanting to make money. And yes, all that. yeah, yeah, yeah. One of that. that's the reason. Yeah, but I haven't played it, which is annoying. But it's been mobbed. Uh, Mr. Grogan is doing all the demos mm. um, in just at sort of the bottom of the stairs uh, from Hall T nine eight. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So it's literally just there on the left. Don't um, remember. It's literally just there in front of me. Right. On my laminated um, map, you can, you can pretend it's a sort of it's a Lacerda, but without being a Lacerda. Okay. So it looks like an Eagle Griffin Lacerda, but it's not. Okay, but it might as well be. I'm told I haven't played it. Yeah, I nearly lost my map yesterday. <gasps> well, did you feel lost? <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> it was did you feel wounded? I, I felt wounded on your behalf. So I went. I went to Bright Eye Games. Took my kids on Friday. Went to Bright Eye Games to play Core Request, and you know the, kid, the kids loved it. And I put my map squarely just down on the thing, and just wandered off. And then I was like, "Where do I need? Where do we need to go? We need to go to Ravensburger, I think it was. Where's my map?" <laughs> Does you feel like you've lost your keys and your phone? And I come, I come sure, bouncing around the corner and Mark said, We were! You've got your map! Here it is! <laughs> Just about to post on social media about it and everything. So. <laughs> Because there are no other maps available at all. The, 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 well, no. No, no, no. Your annotated map. Yeah. Um, I, I should actually point out, he's got it in front of us. I saw, we met up on Thursday night. So this, this because is this the, for the preview. And Rory did actually send me, give me like a little pack in a plastic wallet, which included the map and some other bits oh, and pieces. It's Sue's like, got mine. If yeah. anybody would like a closer look, she can pass it pass around it the around, class. Yeah. Pass it the class so you can see Rory's work. I was, a, I was, a bit, I was getting a bit upset, actually. <laughs> what? You'll have to... <laughs> They're actually doing it, my God. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Key points to note are the, the highlighted red boxes at the bottom. Mm. Right, so there was a good... <laughs> you know, next I've, year, right? I've, you are I've, going to have to release it. As a, as a, obviously, I've uh, colour-coded mine. There was oh. a shop that I wanted to go to, so I did it in blue. Oh. You've got a special version. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> He's got the admin rights, so that's why. <laughs> no, I did that in pen, but I did bring a ruler I mean, to be so fair. the line was straight. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> wow. You're not helping. You're not helping yourself. <laughs> wow. My God. I, I gotta admit, it was quite interesting. I noticed this during SETI, right? So we've got um, we've got me, me, Rory and Sid, and we've got John playing SETI. 
Um, and I looked around the table, and Sid and Rory had perfectly aligned all their pieces. So you've got tokens to represent your scanning, and you've got little satellite dishes. So Sid's and Rory's were all in perfect rows, even rows as well, so they knew exactly how many yep. pieces they had. Me and John just had two piles of tokens. <laughs> I think that tells you everything about our personalities, doesn't it? Very meticulous, I yeah. like order. Oh, did, did Sid have his tongue out while he was, he was organising? Yeah, yeah, when there, I yeah. stood up. Uh, yeah, yeah, there was yeah, a tongue out. Definitely, that, yeah. yeah. All sorts yeah. of to be fair, John did look like he's about to fall asleep at any I moment. Did, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was a tough day. Um, one of my little highlights I've had. So uh, obviously here Friday with the kids, and we went and played Ethermon. So if you like Pokemon, if you've got children that like Pokemon, it's like that, but it's like a co-op set collection game. You've got a nice little grid. Um, you know, elemental monsters, elemental creatures, really, really cute art and stuff. So I took mm. Logan along, and he was like, "I want to buy this." So there's, there's, the, there's the box and the. And the he goes, one of the little pin badges, pin badges. And the lady says, uh, if, you, if you just spend another couple of, you know, another two pound, you can get the play mat on the expansion. So he goes, uh, so I say, all right, all right then, go, mate. You have gone full Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> right? The boy has learned well. But the, the funniest thing for me was when, when I dropped him off to his mom that day, he was like, mom, I bought a game and I went full Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> right? He did it with such pride. <laughs> I just, I just collapsed. Good lad, <laughs> well done. He hasn't learned yet. No, no, he hasn't. No, he has learned. That's the point. You three are yet to learn. <laughs> yeah, he spent my money and got everything. <laughs> that's for even it. better. That's yeah. gone one better. <laughs> no, it's plus. Yes. <laughs> if you're going to do it, use someone else's money. <laughs> you just reminded me. On Friday. Yeah. Did, did you leave the gas on or something? No, I didn't leave the gas. Well, no, it was shit. Did we leave the gas on? <laughs> <laughs> um, we played. Arkham Horror, the RPG. We did. Oh, we did. We yes. did. I totally forgot about it, and I remember. And I, I was quite disparaging about it. I pulled my hands up before we went and played it. I was like, "Nah, it's going to be a bit, bit crap." But we sat down and played it. Yeah, it's worth it's the pun. Crap. It's worth the no. It's worth the poke. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> the mechanics were clever. It was a really tight little game, and it's a lot better than um, I was expecting. Oh, see, okay. that's the problem. I don't think it's a role playing game. I think it's a board it's, game. I was going to say, it's, it, is, it is not quite a role-playing game and not quite a board game. It's, yes. it's board game plus it is. or RPG light. Yeah, I think, I, I think we all came to the conclusion afterwards that it's very much a kind of entry-level RPG. It's kind of to tease you into that thing because it's very, very mechanical. Um, you've got a dice pool that you spend on actions yeah. and things like it's, that, which is fine. It works. Fine. As, a, yeah. as a game, it works fine. But yeah. I, I felt there was little opportunity in what we played, which admittedly was very limited. I, so, I, I thought that the thing that makes it very much board gamey was the fact that it, you're obviously going to get this in a big box. It felt like it was going to say mm. for the same model as the Star Wars RPGs that FFG did. Yeah. You're going to get it in a box, you're going to get fold-out maps, you're going to get tokens. Mm. And it felt very much like it's designed to run these specific modules and it's not really designed for you to write your own. I think you're right. Yeah. I mm. think you're right. But it felt slicker and better than things like mansions and Ar and, and Eldritch and stuff. It, you know, you had a single map out there, yeah. you had your old characters that were pretty... Set and ready it, to go. It, was, it was a good mechanic. This dice pool mechanic. So mm. the dice mm. pool was you spent your dice pool. So if you took an action, you chose how many dice you wanted to use out of your pool, yeah. which was really quite good because it means you could right go health eleven, yeah. roll all the dice, so you could roll a couple and keep some back for other yeah. actions. So I thought it was quite. I, clever. I thought it was more. I thought the mechanics were more clever than I'd given them credit for. Mm. Oh, it worked very, very well. <laughs> so disparaging. <laughs> no, I'm wrong. Right, no, I, I thought was you wrong. guys were a bit numpties. I, I was. I bet, I bet, you I'm wrong. I, I thought it was going to be terrible, <laughs> but it was. It was really good. Oh, it worked. Yeah, it was just. I think there was, was really very good. little opportunity for actual role playing. That was we, the thing. We, but then again, we, we obviously it, played. It was a set demo where they were showing off the combat mechanics. So it wasn't really a. Yeah, and he did say it's nowhere near done yet. No, so it's not finished. There's a lot to, to, finished. to do to it. So, because what you guys played was the special prequel that they've written especially for Expo. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Basically, go into a barn. Bad, bad things are happening, and we hit all just, things with spades. Hit things with spades or guns, mm. depending on what you've got. Yeah. Or not as well. Do spells. what Steve does and go right. I'm I'm going to roll lots and lots of successes. Rolls all six of his dice and misses. Misses. <laughs> How long we got left? Uh, right, halfway through. Oh, brilliant. Right, smashing. Oh, yeah, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> we ran out of things. Oh, no, no, no. We've got a lot of... We've, we've got this huge list like of us. games in front of us, and I just don't know how quickly we want to run through them. Um, I don't... We, we want to keep it fairly light, I suppose, don't we? we don't... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, games we've forgotten. There's one game on this list which we keep forgetting we've played. Go on, which one's that Only one? Only one. That one there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Despite the fact I wrote it down 20 minutes ago. <laughs> so forgettable. Well, it was, that's terrible. It was Ironwood from uh, Mind Clash Games. We had a demo. It's a two player um, area control ish card based game. And it's very asymmetric, uh, but your cards are very similar in what they do. So one, one guy is like uh, steampunky iron people who are building things. They're the iron side of it. The other side are like wood elves, and they are the wood side of it. And they both occupy different parts of the map, so you will never have the same tokens in the same place. So the elf, elf type people are in the woods, the dwarven four iron people are in like mountains. Mm. Um, and what you're, you've both got two different objectives. So one side is supposed to grab, find, and retrieve three totems. That's the, the, the wood people. And then the iron people are supposed to build three fortresses. So you've got two separate win mechanics. The, the iron people also have this massive drill which wanders around the map gathering resources. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that game at all. We just were not excited by it at all. Oh. That's why it's kind of we keep forgetting you about keep it. Forgetting about it. Okay. Um, it. It worked really well. Every single card's different, and then you, you use the cards for actions, but you can also use the cards in combat, which give you combat bonus and defensive bonuses and like a, a win bonus. So it's not just a case of just killing the baddies isn't what you need. You need a number of flags, which is based on how many people are left. Um, quite clever, really well put together. It's mind clash, so really well put together. I mean, looked absolutely yeah, beautiful. Did, yeah. Graphic yeah. design was lovely. The rules-wise, we didn't have any issues with the rules either. No. It just, I don't know, it just didn't excite us. I think no. that it suffered the, the deck-building problem. Didn't know the deck. Yeah. Couldn't learn the deck in the half-hour hour we had, so you're always at a disadvantage. You didn't know what the other person's going to yeah. have in the hand kind of thing. Yeah, so, yeah, and we didn't really clash with each other. We didn't really have any fights together. We mm. kind of stayed out of each other's way and did our own thing. Mm. Is sure. this the one that looks a bit like Root on the board? Yes. Yeah. 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 From a distance, it's very brown, it's brownish red root. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. With yeah. the green thrown in, just right. To well, I can't see all of those things. Well, that's why you shades of brown. Brown. Yeah. brown. It's just brown. It's just brown. Yeah. Yeah. Talk, talking of the deck building problem, yeah. I spotted Alicat Games are selling Rootless, one of my favourite deck building games, part of them, for only a fiver. So if you like deck builders and you've got a spare five pound in your pockets, just go pick up Ruthless because it's bloody brilliant. Spare five pounds spare on a Sunday five. afternoon of an expo. No one's got that. <laughs> <laughs> this might be a serendipitous five pounds then. Because mm. I was walking to the pub last week. You? Was, was, oh, in oh, the pub? Walking, 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 walking the pub. to the pub. <laughs> walking to the pub. <laughs> well, no, walking to the pub. And I found a five pound note on the floor and me wondering what to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pint right there. Yeah. That's God saying, go for a pint. So I went for a pint last night and it was a mistake. I could have got, I went for that point, and I was like, I just really fancied it. And then by the time I got home, I was like, I really just should have just come home and snatched <laughs> <laughs> I really should have just point. I had one point, and yeah, it was all right, but I was like, I needed, I really, really wanted another one. Yeah. I lost an hour. I sat a point instead of dinner last night. <laughs> <laughs> so was that was the mistake. That was the mistake. <laughs> the point itself wasn't. Oh, Speaking of spending money, have you bought our um, competition mini yet, Mr. Mr. Summers? No, Steve and I, I were not very... bought one of our competition minis yet. Mm. One. We... Do you not know about the second one? I do not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so how, our how, how are your pants at the moment? <laughs> you got a spare one in the bag? <laughs> a few. Right. So <laughs> our, our first competition mini is the Corvus Belly UK Games Expo Limited Edition Special Mini. Right, which I'm really looking forward to paint because it's got ice. <laughs> on it. But the second one, <laughs> they're all teaming you, man. I, I just, I just, can't, I'm not looking forward to that at all. Um, but, so it's also metal, so it's going to be a pig to put together. Oh, brilliant! I did it last night. It's an but absolute nightmare. The second one, the second one, which I've managed to secure for us, is the Avalon Riven Veil. UK, the uh, Kickstarter first day backers oh. exclusive dragon. Oh, nice! Other oh, one, one that Steve and I were drooling over on yeah. a Friday morning. So we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get some of those to paint up, ready Sweet. for the um, ready for the release of the Kickstarter. Uh, when's that? Two years time, based on your painting. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yeah. sorry, that came out. That came out. Didn't it? <laughs> you, sir. <laughs> I have no filter, I'm sorry. <laughs> I would disagree, but... Uh... Yeah, so we're going to have to get our skates on my back, because I think that's going to yeah, be launching this autumn. Nothing like a ticking clock to motivate uh, you, is there? Uh, my, my guess is around Gen Con time. Yeah. Uh, Gen yeah. Con will be a big date for them, because it's a big 
you know, Mary Trashy style game. So mm. I think I think they'll be they'll be pushing for a Gen Con launch for that. Okay, right. So, so yeah, uh, that's Ed, that's mid August usually. <laughs> it's loads of time. <laughs> Such a I, mean, bad idea. I, I, reckon, I reckon he's going to get you the mini with like two weeks to spare as well. He's <laughs> going to treat you like professionals. That's what he's going to do. Yeah. Oh, it was, <laughs> so, it was so embarrassing. So I'm at the stand chatting in, chatting to Jamie about getting the model and doing the painting competition. And then Sarastro rocks up. <laughs> <laughs> and he very politely just went, Excuse me a minute, Rory. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who I am? <laughs> I think that was the problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was fun. Nice. Yeah, I missed all that. I haven't seen him yet. He, he was only here yesterday. No, he's here today bumped, as well. Is he? Yeah. Oh, I, I Apparently, I haven't seen him yet. I randomly bumped into him. Other highlights. Oh, blimey. You've got the list. I've got the list. Uh, <laughs> I'm after a little picture. It's a well oiled that. machine, as you can see. So, why don't you, Sid, talk to us about the uh, Acropolis expansion? Because oh, we love Acropolis. We do love the expansion. We do love which it. Which is so prototypy, it's still in French. It's still in French, which didn't help. Um, it's got little <laughs> sticky on bits. Sticky on bits. Right, but it's. So, it's a little add on for Acropolis. It's about a dozen little single hex tiles, which you don't get single hex tiles in Acropolis to start with, nope. so that's different. And you've got four pieces of Athena. Mm -hmm. And that's it. But it totally changes the game. Oh, really? Yeah, because it makes you forget to play the original game. So I was playing with Dave, wherever he is. Dave's around somewhere. And Dave played the original game and just wiped the floor with me because I was focused on the expansion and forgot how to play Acropolis. You were, be you were being a professional board game reviewer and really poking the new stuff. No, I was being oh. an idiot. <laughs> I mean, I like that you Brilliant. tried to be, you know, Brilliant. build me back up again. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but it's, it's really clever because you you, um, you you have to make, um, oh, sorry, it's got little, like, uh, mission cards. Yeah. So you have to try and complete the mission, which lets you access a piece of Athena and then pick up one of these single tiles. And the single tiles it can be, like, um, a mixed tile of red and sort of market and a barracks. Mm. And then, obviously, you can place them in new and exciting ways and stuff like that. But it gives you a little bit of extra to do. Nice, okay. New, new, new mechanics to win, all sorts of stuff. That's good. I like, it when an, I like it when an expansion really enriches the game. It, it and definitely doesn't just bring you more stuff. Yeah, mm. it definitely makes the game better. Yeah. Or not better. It gives you different ways to play the game. You could completely ignore it all and just focus on your original game, like Dave did. Yeah. Well, actually, no, Dave didn't do that. Dave also then played the expansion and won, so he just wiped the floors with me completely, basically. Um, but yeah, no, it's really good, but it's not out till October-ish time. But it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a 12 quid expansion, so it's kind of a quick back, and it's, it's really good. Really recommend it. Yeah. Right, well, speaking of being an idiot, <laughs> you haven't told, I haven't told you guys this yet, have I? I, I, I told it's hot news. Early. No, it's not really hot news. Right, so Thursday night we have the press preview. I was going for a load of old emails before, right. before Expo and thinking, right, you know, do the whole thing of finding people who have contacted us and saying, how are you going to be at Expo? Because like, most of these people don't realise where we are, don't realise we're going to be at Expo, so send old messages to all these publishers. And I was flicking through and found some old emails that I hadn't answered to in two years. Um, <laughs> So I saw this, so this email for this game, and a lot of these, a lot of these uh, for games we're not interested in, and you guys probably won't be either, so we kind of say, all right, no, sorry, that's not for us. But this looked really interesting, this game. Looked on, hadn't come to Kickstarter yet. So even though the email had come out two years ago, wow. their development time was obviously really long, and it's coming to Kickstarter in August, which is Verahode, I think it's pronounced. It's a very weird oh, spelling. Yeah, that, yeah. So I sent an email to the, to the manager of this media company. She said, yes, we're going to be at Expo. You can come see us. Brilliant. Get to the press preview, get to the stand. They go, oh, ah, Steve, it's you. The person who doesn't answer their email. <laughs> <laughs> so hang on, did they invite you to the stand just to slag you off? I get the impression. She then goes, oh, she goes to get a selfie. Selfie, right, there we go. I can now stick that on the wall and say, this is the person who took the longest to respond to an email. You're at the top of the, the, the list now. Well, I think, I think you get enough for a second one. <laughs> Um, the, the game actually was, I don't think it's on display today, it was only on display yesterday, because they've got one stand, it's, uh, I can't remember the name of the company, it was 502s, it's by Floodgate Games, just, just a couple down from the Catan stand. Mm. Uh, but they represent loads of games, so what they're doing is they're swapping out what games they've got. Okay. So the Rahode game, which one looked interesting to me, isn't on show there today, it was oh. on show yesterday. So That's an interesting yeah, but marketing they've got, they've, decision. They've got a little tiny stand and they're representing like 10 games on wow. the one stand. Wow. So, oh. Yeah, it's 
quite tightly packed, I think. Right. Anybody else, any other highlights? Or being an idiot. Or being an idiot. <laughs> Both. Uh, <laughs> Ada's Dream was good. Oh, yeah. Is Ada's Dream? Yes, Ada's yeah, Alley yeah, So I managed, managed to bag a slot on that because Alley are traditionally very, very busy. Um, but Alora and I managed to sit down on that on Friday mm-hmm. morning, actually. It's one of the first things we played. Um, and it's very good. Yeah. Um, not as heavy as we were led to believe, I think. Okay. I'd say it's med- medium weight. It's not that complicated. I think the the weight comes from the thinking about what order you do things. So the idea is you build basically building almost you know a Babbage machine. Mm. Um, like, oh, sorry, a Babbage machine. Yes, a computer. Cool. Um, <laughs> not not a cabbage machine. Not a cabbage machine. As in Charles Babbage, you know, no, right. so the, or, or birther of the computer, you know. But um, the idea is you've got a, basically a grid of nine slots and into which you can put dice um, and the rows and columns, uh, you do mathematical operations, so add times divide and all that lot, um, to get points. And you, on your turn, you base, there's a, it's kind of a rondelle, um, but not really. Nice Good guy, that guy. Yes, he gets about. <laughs> and uh, you shove a die to sort of kind of clockwise around the, um, this sort of rondelle in order to, to knock Good one guy. out, as it were. I might rephrase that. <laughs> 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 to push your die out. Uh, and that's the die you take. And then later on, so you either take a die or push a die, uh, or put a die onto the machine. Mm. Um, all the spots are currently uh, originally occupied, so you've got to basically do lots of different things to, to pull these things out. And towards the end of the game, you basically got to try and put all these dice in to make mathematical operations. So, But in doing so, you basically kick off lots of different bonuses. And the beauty of the game is not the mechanic, the, the simple sort of do your thing on your turn. It's the benefits you get by doing those mm. things. So you can kick off like one or two or three ancillary actions which give you the ability to basically oh, build this machine more. So nice. I think you really like yeah. it because it's the kind of thing you'll, you'll enjoy. Um, I think it's hitting Kickstarter later this year. I don't know exactly when. Soonish, yeah. probably. Yeah. Soonish. But if you can get to Alicat, it's really worth checking it out. It's a really clever game. Let's get some, shall I get some questions. Why not? Let's derail this even further. <laughs> <laughs> Might put it back on the rails. Mm. <laughs> what do you think of them? Anyone, yeah, any questions, anyone? Absolutely anything. It doesn't have to be expo related. <laughs> Everyone's been playing Dragon Keepers. Have you played it? We'll set it in. What? Dragon, what? Keep, Dragon Keepers? Dragon Keepers? Yeah. No, That's no. 36 for the listening. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon well, Keepers. Can you tell us more? On uh, Cosmos, you get dragons and there's crystals. And keep them. Oh, oh, is that the, the little cute little yeah, dragony cute. monster? Thing? Okay. That's yeah. what he's just said. Yeah. What he just yeah. said. Yeah. <laughs> Well done I'm for using different words. <laughs> right, hang on. Right. I was writing words. <laughs> right, right. And apparently saying I'm, them. I've been, I've been back and forth to the expo since Wednesday. All right, I'm bloody shattered. Right. I'm not entirely convinced my shoes are on the right feet. Okay? Right. <laughs> What you've done is what we used to do in, in, in like literary reviews at the university. We'll just read some some people's stuff and reword it as if it's our own. <laughs> That's what you've just done. Dragon keepers at Cosmo. That's where I'm going back there anyway to go and play cities still. Yeah. Because mm. 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 one of one of the games I've missed so far that I wanted to see was cities. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Oh. Any, any more? So dragon keepers. Thanks for the tip. Sam. You. I think you're very well researched. Clearly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> were there any, any games that any of you like? Um, saw that you didn't, didn't plan to see, didn't expect to see, or maybe surprised by it. Uh, yeah, I've literally just come from playing Deep Regrets. So I saw this at the press preview. Um, so that is in uh, Hall 2, 397. God, that better be good, otherwise the press are going to be all over it. Oh, God, uh, but it's, no it's, regrets it's, for playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was really like, the, the guy who's done all the, own, uh, done all the art himself, and he's done it all in ink. So it's got a really disturbing kind of Ren and Stimpy, a uh, futuramary type thing. And the idea is you're all fishermen going out to sea. You've got three layers of sea. Um, you've got to try and catch really bizarre looking fish and creatures. But the backs of the cards have a little shadow on them. So you can try and guess how dangerous or how big the fish is, spending your dice to do it. The artwork's brilliant, but when you flip these cards over, um, it, it can potentially send everybody slightly insane. So the chap went, oh, I'm just going to go level one, just do a little bit of fishing, found a corpse and drove everybody insane. So at the end of the game, you pick up these regret cards. Whoever's got the most regret cards loses their best fish that there's hung up. But the more insane you are, the more dice you have, which means you can collect 
better fish. So I feel that fish is saying fish a lot. <laughs> fish. fish. Um, but that was, a, it looked really interesting, looked quite fun. The artwork was really quite cute, uh, but like disturbingly cute. There was, like, yes, we saw a corpse, then somebody else found a pram. Uh, this is, this is still in the game, everybody, right? Yeah, it's still the same oh, game. Yeah. In uh, the game. I've so found... Is this fishing in the Birmingham Canal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was quite nice. That was the one, that was probably the... And then that was the one that I've only checked out that I found out about on Thursday. There was two that I found out about on Thursday that I didn't know about. Yep. One of them because I don't think they'd actually mentioned it at all, which is the Mass Effect game, yeah. Modiphius. Um, so Chris from Modiphius just t t told us that halfway through the, the press preview. And that's one we're not allowed to take photographs of, so we're, we haven't been able to share it either. Um, I don't know what they're doing with the demos. Now, the other one, now, annoyingly, what I do is, especially at the press previews, I take a photograph of the game with the board game in the way, right? So this is from Cook's stand. I can't wait, what's the name of Cook's company? Bright Eyed Games. Bright Eyed Games, right? Was well, that the so one I've with got, the Kiwis? Yeah. yeah, I've got a photograph of the game, and Mark's hand is in the way of the name of the game, so I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> ah, I might, have, I might have a picture of that. Hang on. <laughs> so I took but, a picture of it too. While you're for, while finding the name, this was a game about uh, colonising New Zealand, mm. and you had uh, four factions, so the colonisers, the Maori, Kiwis, and possums. Kauri. Kauri. That was it, yeah. yeah. And it basically looked like a lighter more fun version of Spirit Island. Yes, it did. So you had oh. the colonizers trying to build towns and cities, then you had the, the possums and, and the, uh, the Kiwis trying to survive, and then the Maori trying to push all the colonizers back. Yeah. Looked really like bright and colorful, really interesting, and every faction worked differently as well. So maybe like, like Root meets Spirit Island. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it was, if you're playing at two player, you can only play with these two factions. Yeah. So you're playing with three, you have to play with the third. So, um, yeah, you can only play with the, the Kiwi if you're playing four players, I think it was. No, it's the, the class, it's the English people of the fourth yeah. player, I think. Re the yeah. English of the fourth just, player? Just to be clear, mm. the colonizers are English. Right. Specifically yeah. says Englishman. It does. <laughs> All right. It does, yeah. We are bad. Yeah. Terrible. It does. Just, so, just for a few. Yeah, I think, the, I think it's, it's English. And and <laughs> I, think it's the, I think it's the Kiwis and the Possums of one and two. Okay. Then it adds... No, no. The, the one of them goes autom One goes um, automatic. What's the word? I've lost the word. Now. Automa. 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 Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the, the colonizers are the fourth and the third one might be the possums. I can't remember. But anyway, yeah. So I thought you were going to talk about uh, the Thinning Veil when you mentioned games that you didn't know about. At yeah. uh, the press preview, Thinning Veil, Steve's walking along this aisle and just freezes and turns <laughs> <laughs> 90 degrees because that was very much up your street. That yes, one. Did you manage to check I, that out? I still haven't managed to check it out, but uh, yeah, it's because they were quite rammed. Every time they're basically in one corner of hole two, and every time I go past, they're completely rammed. So yeah, I haven't 1003. Had a to check it out yet. 1003, yeah. there we go. Uh, but yeah, that looked it was a solo and two player only, which is the only thing that put me off, but very. Grim, dark, fantasy, adventure, dungeon crawling type thing. Because you have a type. Hello. I have a type, yes. <laughs> yeah, so does Andy, by the sounds of it. Um, uh, I think that's it. Anyone else got anything new and exciting that well, they didn't no, know about? Because I wasn't as well researched Shocker. as, as Rorosaurus. Stop um, <laughs> <laughs> The one that... Well, I, I, rather than Rorosaurus, I've been calling him my PA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's either that or Hermione, whichever. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because I wasn't as well as well read as you and the research as you, <coughs> I didn't really know about courtesans before I arrived. Oh, yeah. We mentioned it on the podcast. You mentioned it, but I wasn't really listening. I think that's probably <laughs> <laughs> He's eating in his eclair. I'm probably eating in his eclair. I'll phase out something. So the information was available, you <laughs> yeah, just I chose not to absorb it. I skived it. off that class. Yeah. <laughs> so I turned up not knowing anything about it. And do you know what? It's really good. We had a lot of fun. We had a really good, a good time game. playing. Yeah. We played a five-player game, but really Sid and I just played a two-player game. <laughs> <laughs> and, and everyone else won because <laughs> Because you, you get your three cards and you've got to place one in front of yourself and then one on the queen's table and that dictates the scoring, how things are going to score, and then one to another person. So I'll be like, this one's good for me, this one's bad for Sid, and this one's bad for Sid. And then Sid would do exactly the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just, we, we ended we had up a good with, time. We, we ended really up with time. very low scores compared to everybody else. <laughs> I got zero points in all. Yeah, we got less than that. Nothing. Oh, no, that's, good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Uh, other people were at the table, apparently. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Another question? What's the best kids game you found? Mm. Don't ask me. 
Uh, play <laughs> Ethermon. Oh. Ethermon was, re- was a really nice. That's the Pokemon mod I want to mention. That plays co-op and competitive as well. Really cute art. It was only 18 quid for the box set, just some cards. Uh, you can pimp up with uh, expansion sleeves and a gaming mat. The other one I tried was that Ravensburger, which was the Disney Chronicles of Light. Um, I was expecting my seven-year-old son to just not be interested in, not to be sexist, but he's like he's not going to be interested in Disney princesses. But he really, really enjoyed it. He went on an absolute mission to destroy the shadows. Um, that was really clever in is that you've got uh, slightly asymmetric. Everyone's got slightly different powers but you take six actions every turn, but you can decide which player's taking which action. So you can go, actually, Moana is over here doing nowhere near any bad guys. So um, other Disney princess characters. Uh, <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll go, right, we can do all our stuff. So Maid Marion's one of them. Yes, she goes, right, okay, I'll, so I'll take all of these. So actually as a player, you just go, I'm not gonna take any actions this turn because I'm too far away from everything. So that was quite a nice play. Everyone's also got like a mini quest. So you've got five different types of actions. Two everybody shares, it's just movement, and then your special ones. But you have to unlock your super special power. So I was playing, what's the, the I'm looking at you guys, Francis. Um, <laughs> from The incredible, the Incredibles, the girl from The Incredibles, who's the force fields. No, the one who does the force fields. Violet, yes, thank you. <laughs> the person I least expected to know the answer to that question. <laughs> but yeah, Violet, she had like force field, so it's like actually if she goes to anywhere there's bad guys, she uses her ability and you don't take any damage. But that was quite specific to the character I was playing. So it was that was a really nice little fun game. Um, I was expe- yeah, expecting my son to just bounce straight off that, but he wouldn't you, go into it. You want to go and check out Dunk the Hunk, mate. Dunk the Hunk. Duncan Rhodes is here. Um, and his company's here with two thin coats, and they're doing a paint and take. So if anybody's got any kids with them, take That's them there. Hall three, hall three I think it's in, yeah. Oh. So you, you'll get a little bit of bit of time, let them paint and They do have mess. a small stand. They've they have got a small, small stand. stand. Hall one as well. Which has got some very nice stuff on it, and if you want to meet the man himself, I think he was there yesterday. I don't know if he's there today. He's been, yeah. Is Friday, he? Saturday he's been. I don't know if he's there today. Uh, but I but imagine he probably yeah, will be. Paint and take in Hall three. It's worth a punt. We looked at Goat's Day out. We did look at Goat Stay Out yesterday. Yeah, it's in the it's in the family zone where you get to um, Tetris in into a goat's stomach. What is eating? <laughs> <laughs> and that's about all we know. But you have to like pass things around and fit the polynomial. That one that's the word. into the goat's stomach. So that's worth a punt as well. That's very cool. That's what I was doing when you were doing this. What? Is it a real good stomach? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can. Uh, that's that's a Kickstarter extra. <laughs> <laughs> if you go, if you do a Lewis, it comes with different animal stuff. Uh, Ryan, you had a question, mate. What was yours? Yeah. Uh, is there anything that you've seen that maybe didn't quite live up to the expectation, or you've been a bit disappointed by? That's a. That's, <laughs> a, that's, a, that's a loaded question. Mm, that is. Mutagen. Really? No. Yeah. Mm. It's not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's all right. But I don't think it was that offended. good. I like really like. Look, I I didn't have a chance to oh, play it. Looks it looks lovely. But I had a good talk through it. It looked it, it sounded like a nice like point salad action economy, do stuff to do more stuff to do more stuff. It, it is. looked like it's going to tick a lot of boxes for me. It is, but I think that's the problem with it. It's just too like everything else mm. to me. Okay. I, I didn't I didn't feel it was that different. I mean, it's it is exactly that. Yeah. You can be clever with the way you do it, but it did feel quite linear in the sense that you need to do one thing to get something else, to get something else, to get something else, and if you didn't do the first step in that chain, you weren't going to win. Okay. You need upgrades. You need, up, you need you upgrades. You need to get, you an, need up, get an upgrade, then, then upgrade your ship, and then do that, and then do that. It, it seemed like it was on rails. Okay. It's not bad, don't get me wrong. It's very clever. Yeah. Um, and I guess the skill comes in getting the upgrades in the right order to do the, the, the right do things. You? But, I don't know, there's something about it that just kind of just went, eh, it's all right. Okay. I played, it wasn't a big, big fancy one, but I played Coffee Rush yesterday, which has been doing the rounds on Instagram because it comes with all the really nice blinification, the little coffee cups, and they put the ice cubes in it, and the steam, and the milk, and that's the most interesting thing about the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh. wow. it, it was just, it was just, it, get, get cubes, it could be cubes, get cubes, fulfill a contract, do the stuff. Um, and that was, that was it, really. Um, I think it's going to be 40 quid. I, all you're doing is paying for all the plastic bits. So, mm. yeah, it was a 10 pound, you know, come out 10 years ago, it would have been 10 pound with some wooden cubes. That was that was disappointing. Mm. I will point out the Midian's still prototype, though, so, yeah. so they've still got to tweak it, so they might 
make it a bit more interesting. I don't know, it just lacked something for me. Go on, Gil, what, was, what didn't you like? No, I, I, I had very low expectations in life. <laughs> <laughs> that, it, it's a way, seriously, you just rock up with no expectation of anything, you're never disappointed. Yeah. Okay. Everything just goes better. No, <laughs> generally though, I have, um, courtesy of Rory's research, I know we took the, the piss out of your research you and do. stuff, mate, but it has paid off massive dividends because it's filtered out a lot of the trash. <laughs> it really has. Yeah. Um, so for me, no, I, I've I've had a really good expo. I've I've not felt I've wasted time on any sessions or any games. I mean, Ironwood was a bit meh, but mm. that's that's but only meh. It's not it, bad. It wasn't bad. That's was my it? point. It, it was not bad. There was didn't... nothing that I felt I'd wasted an hour on. Yeah. No, I agree. The meeting was still. Yeah, I felt the same. There's nothing I played and kind of went. Oh, I've wasted the time there. No. I mean, my biggest disappointment is the lack of decent coffee stands at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Never mind inside uh, the halls where you used to get mm, that's generally. Right. Me, and, me and Rory are Thermos Brothers now. <laughs> <laughs> that's the shittest superhero duo I've ever heard. <laughs> Thermos yeah, Brothers. Yeah, but we've got coffee. We're <laughs> so a <laughs> <laughs> disaster happens, you turn up, drink. <laughs> now, what you have to ask is, everybody seen Rory's... Um, Coffee holster. My coffee holster. <laughs> Rory's <laughs> coffee holster is something. It's show and tell. It's coffee holster. It's show and tell. This is my... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, it's a chalk He's going bag. climbing yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Bag, but there you go. That's my coffee holster. So my coffee cup is just always there whenever I need it. Right? And, and then when you sit down to play a game, it's just still there. It's still there. Which, which was great. That way, that way you never accidentally spill your drink over a game either. It's just always there. <laughs> now, you might this think that was, the a, best that was a bad thing. It's not. <laughs> I noticed it yesterday, and I don't want to say anything, because I was like, oh, maybe it's like something... It's basically his so, safety uh, blanket. I, I, I am a little bit ashamed of it. That's why I've been putting my gimbal and there. Right, so people think, oh, it's just, it's just for the equipment. And rightly <laughs> so. <laughs> it's just... Next year, do we expect Polyhydrin Collider branded coffee? We could brand a thermos. Brand a thermos? Oh, oh, for our weak lemon drinks. A weak lemon drink. Yeah, thermos. Yeah. What do you need a thermos for a weak lemon drink for? Keep it cold. Because keep it cold. It's never, it's never that cold, is it? What? You put oh, isn't the point? It's supposed to warm it. up during the day. No, <laughs> Don't want tepid weak lemon drink. <laughs> That's when it's at its best. <laughs> <laughs> Right, with that, that's probably that uh, we have to well, call we, we can't end. No, call it there, Ari. Yeah, we can't. We can't end there. End on a high. On that, on that point of mediocrity. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing mediocre about this coffee holster. <laughs> <laughs> it's inspired. <laughs> it's very protective of it, isn't it? <laughs> Look. It's like a safety blanket or something. <laughs> it keeps my hand sanitizer close, isn't it? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think, I think uh, Andy, you missed out on the, the, the Facebook chat conversation between these two, actually organising which one to buy, because which one fits the, the coffee cup yeah. properly as well. A lot of planning. But that doesn't that. surprise me of him. No. Yeah. <laughs> Rory's laminate map of dreams and planning. But I've not, I've not, I've not been, I've not experienced Rory's shopping habits. Yours, no. unfortunately, <laughs> I was part of when you spent six months trying to buy an amplifier. Yeah, well, it's a complicated business. <laughs> yes, yeah, apparently it is. <laughs> Right, then, we are probably going to get kicked out anytime soon. So, mm -hmm. thank you very much, everyone, for coming today. I hope we enjoy the rest of the expo. The next four hours left. Yeah, four, four, hours, four hours. Four hours seems like nothing, but four yeah, we've been here. You've got a massive list of still things to say. Oh, I still got stuff to say. Oh. <laughs> anyway, yeah. until next time, we'll see you next year. Happy expo. Ta ra. Cheerio. Goodbye. Considering we say goodbye and hello in the same order every time, the fact that we haven't got it written down on a screen in front of us, who's next? I'm sat next to Steve, it must be me. It's like a tick now, that's it. <laughs> so does Steve there's something, I have to say something. Ironically, it's the first time Sid didn't forget. Yeah. <laughs> Uses an air of panic in his voice. I'm <laughs> <laughs>